steady now. Originally planned to release in 2012 for then current systems, the medium would become something of a white whale for Polish studio Bluber Team. Pitched as a game where a medium can see two worlds simultaneously, hardware limitations meant the project would be shelved until technology could catch up to the ambitious proposal. Finally, with the hardware grunt of the Xbox Series consoles, development began under a studio now far more experienced with the horror genre, with the likes of Observer and Layers of Fear. Attempting to blend the cerebral pace of modern horror with the perspective and ideology of classical survival horror, this spiritual tale ends up proving a distinctive, if not completely successful, effort. Marianne is a spirit medium living in late 90s Poland. After helping her foster father pass on, a mysterious phone call sends her to the Neva Workers Resort, an abandoned site which rumours suggest housed a shocking massacre. As Marianne enters the facility, she soon realises the place has deep spiritual ties and a dark entity which could spell her end, and she must investigate further while trying to track down the caller known as Thomas. The medium's tale is a dark, uncompromising look at some unsettling topics that wouldn't feel out of place in a Silent Hill game, and it can feel abstract at points which may turn off some. However, the thread is pretty compelling, with Marianne's underlying mystery adding intrigue and bolstered by her likeable personality, which apes sassy heroes of 90s survival horror. So began the great dumpster heist of 1999. It can border on Goofy, but there's a weird charm to her commentary which grounds the otherworldly story. The medium can best be described as a modern horror game in the skin of a Resident Evil clone, mixing slower paced gameplay with static camera angles. The latter actually works well, successfully creating tension or highlighting an explorable area clearly while providing some beautiful vistas. The only downside is, sometimes, the controls get confused and you end up walking in circles. The structure sees you exploring the facility while tracking down objects to open new paths, some of which need combining to become useful, such as pieces of a piano music sheet. It entails some backtracking, though the experience is more linear than those titles. There's also no firearms or combat to really speak of, meaning no ammo conservation is present. Although at times, reacting incorrectly can see you get a game over, such as stealth segments where you avoid the entity. Bloober's dream of split worlds would finally come to life with 9th gen hardware, and it is the standout part of the medium. At times, Marianne's perspective splits into two, with her reality and the spirit realm being both viewable and actions affecting both. The unsettling brown hue of the spirit side, combined with body horror, makes for a distinctive world. Wait, I know you. The game capably renders both at once with little performance issues, which is the feat. But the puzzling that occurs is perhaps even better, as you're forced to use your grey matter to progress. Sometimes Marianne cannot progress in the real world, but going out of body allows you to continue in the spirit world, with tension from limited time, as staying too long kills Marianne. It can also occur in the spirit world, requiring you to open the path in reality, the two worlds add a unique spin to exploration, puzzle, and gameplay, and it definitely helps this one stand out. The issue with the medium is that, in all honesty, it feels quite short on tangible gameplay. Some will bemoan a slower paced focus on exploration and story over gameplay, though to call it a walking sim is perhaps too strong. There are some moments of action or interactivity, 
but they can range in quality. Stealth segments feel very basic, and unless you sprint or walk right into the monster, can be passed with ease, though at least they don't recall terrible stealth of the early 2000s. Some chase sequences, on the other hand, feel like potluck, as making a slightly wrong push can see you grabbed and killed. But overall, this is a relatively easy game and one which can consequently feel one and done. You can finish the game in around 7 hours, and while plentiful collectibles can be missed without a keen eye, it's not one you'll be racing back to. Thomas? The presentation here is very impressive. Some may bemoan the lack of a 60 frames per section option, but really, the visuals on display are quality. Texture work is mostly fantastic, characters look top notch while animating believably, and the world, both real and spiritual, is beautifully lit and gorgeously crafted. The ruined facility which hides a tragic history, the skin barriers you have to cut into and the disfigured entities you encounter in the spirit realm all feel uneasy and add tension. The only dent is some texture popping which can be distracting and a few moments of performance issues. The sound is great too, featuring quality voice work including a rather shocking turn from Troy Baker as the Moor. The music, while sometimes a bit nondescript, does feature a few quality tracks, and the effects sound strong which only contribute to a tense atmosphere further. The Medium is a decent horror game, which manages to impress with its technologically advanced premise, but doesn't nail the execution fully. Those expecting a classical survival horror will likely bemoan the limited gameplay, but others can still enjoy the creepy atmosphere solid storytelling and split world puzzling. It's just a shame that some technical issues, frustrating moments and control quirks get in the way. However, if you can stomach some taboo themes and want an absorbing story to lose just shy of 10 hours to, then this one can still offer enjoyment and perhaps serves as the foundation for a stronger sequel. Who was Thomas? And what did he want from me?